Foremost news from Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Durian ASEAN on Wednesday morning, the voice of discovery and sharing your with grace at ASEAN Dailies, where we deliver news from Southeast Asia. Now, first news we will be delivering news on the uh, Turkey and also the Russia. Apparently, a Russian President uh, Vladimir Putin has condemned the downing of Russian jet on the Turkey Syria border, and he described it as a stab in the back committed by the accomplices of terrorists. So the country Turkey uh, says its jet was shot at a plane after a uh, warning that it was violating uh, Turkish airspace. But then the Russian side, the Moscow says it never never strayed uh, from Syrian uh, air space, apparently. And uh, NATO held an extraordinary meeting at member uh, Turkey's request to discuss this incident particularly. And one of the crew members uh, who ejected from downed plane was killed uh, by the fire from the ground. And also uh, the fate of the other is uh, pretty unclear at the same time. Mr. Putin warned that there will, there will be serious consequences for Moscow's relations with Turkey. And of course, Russia and the Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov have said that he was canceling his visit to Turkey, where he was due on uh, this um, this day, Wednesday, and he also advised Russians not to visit Turkey and said the threat of terrorism there was no less than in Egypt, where the bomb attack brought down a Russian passenger plane last month. And uh, the latest response that the weekend uh, delivered to you is, according to U.S. President Barack Obama, said that Turkey has a right to defend its territory and airspace, and that the incident pointed on ongoing problems with Russia's military operation in Syria. He also mentioned that it was important to find out exactly what had happened and to take measures to discourage any kind of escalation. A Turkish president re- Cap the Tayyip uh, Erdogan uh, has said the Turkey's right to protect its borders must be respected. And lastly, NATO's ambassadors have cancelled on Turkey to show cool headness after downing Russian warplane. Diplomatic sources are quoted by the Reuters news agency as saying, "So more breaking news will uh, will be delivered tomorrow. So stay tuned with us." Well, let's just move on to the political side of uh, Southeast Asia. First, well, we can start with uh, the Philippine news. Uh, crime-fighting Philippine mayor jumps into presidential race. So there are seven-term Philippine mayor who has built a reputation fighting crime plunged in the presidential race uh, just two days ago. And it is quite a surprise move that could shake up the election as well. So Rodrigo Duterte, he is a 70-year-old lawyer. He is also better known as the Punisher uh, for dealing with the discriminators in Southern Davos city and he vowed to clean up the politics in one of Asia's most gruff uh, gruff ridden countries so he said he's running and also uh, the election is being closed watched by investors who fear the political succession in one of the Asia's fast growing economies could re-ra- uh, derail gains uh, made during Aquinas rule so one of them is Grace Paul, a senator who was abandoned as a baby, is leading the race. And also Vice President uh, Jejo Mar Binet is running second, while the Aquino's choice as successor, former Interior Minister Manuel Rojas, is the third place. And uh, all these uh, people participants, uh, they are 
trying their best to give the the right decision for the country. We Filipinos belong to different tribes, but a piece of paper called the Constitution holds us together, and we should respect the Constitution. The election tribunal has set aside the Constitution to favor Po apparently. And uh, one of the participants, the Duterte, missed the end October 16th, the deadline to register his candidacy, but the rules allowed him to stand as a replacement candidate by December when the election authorities start uh, printing these ballot papers. So political analyst Robert Capsible said, Duterte's uh, anti-crime uh, crusade resonates among poor Filipinos, especially bringing drama to the election next May. And uh, uh, according to them, they said he's also a pretty uh, threat to everybody. It is entirely new uh, ball game with the Dorothy joining the fray. So with him uh, joining this party, see how it goes with all this election process. And of course, uh, Grace Poe is uh, sort of leading this election uh, voting system. But uh, again, they will deliver the update news on this election that will happen very soon in the Philippines. And the next news we can talk about... Uh, of the Myanmar and the UN again at odds over human rights and of course constitution that we're talking about here and Myanmar uh, after the election of course they had uh, strongly rejected the criticism of its human right record by the UN and it is slamming the world body for its interference and intrusive language. So uh, there was a third committee uh, of the United Nations General Assembly in New York released its evaluation of Myanmar's human rights record, uh, which was on November 18. So UN criticized Myanmar on numerous accounts. Uh, among them were adoption of a controversial production of race and religion laws, which discriminate against women and ethnic minorities. And we can also talk about Rohingya here. So the UN also called for the fully elected parliament to lead the democratic transition that effectively taking issues with the 2008 constitution, which guaranteed the military 25% of their seats. And every uh, sovereign state has the right to choose its own political system in accordance with the history, traditions, values, realities, and its constitution for sure. And there was also complaint about the UN using intrusive language. Uh, they also objected uh, from Myanmar to the UN, called for the Myanmar to step up its effort uh, to end these remaining human rights violations and abuses, including the arbitrary arrest and rape. It is regrettable that the changes on the ground did not receive any corresponding changes in the mindset of authors of this text. Uh, this is up according to the ambassador. So, uh, the major source of disagreement between UN and Myanmar remained the issue of a Muslim Rohingya minority, like I mentioned before, whom the government calls the Bengalis, of course. The UN re, uh, uh, mentioned its serious concern over the Rohingya in the Rakhine state, and the assembly calls upon the government of Myanmar to protect this human rights and the fundamental freedom of the all individuals, of course. This is to protect the, the uh, human uh, including the person's belongings to the Rohingya's minority. And uh, Rohingya needs to have full citizens, citizenship and related rights. This is something that most of us have been fighting for. And UK teen, he objected to the use of them, uh, the term Rohingya again. Such terminology has never been a part of ethnic national races of Myanmar. It was invented only in the early 1950s to falsely claim as ethnic nationality group for their own agenda. So there are some clashes between UN and Myanmar. Uh, at this stage and uh, uh, regarding uh, Rohingya, it is there the ethnic and the religious minorities in eligibly admitting the criteria which requires the citizenship of the candidate and the both parents. Although 
from all this many of this community have lived in myanmar for generations and generations the rohingya minority is not one of the 135 ethnic group recognized under the current country's 1982 citizenship law apparently and uh, they are se is severely limited in their rights in the police of government and forced segregation in one kind of states so of course more uh, needs to be discussed regarding these minority groups in uh, Myanmar and of course that relates to human rights and this is one of the biggest issues in ASEAN furthermore. So the resolution issued by the UN is not binding despite its harsh criticism the text was not purely negative and also highlighted the positive developments such as economic reform and elections. So these human rights, key right issues really, really need to be uh, addressed properly. And also not only in the UN, perhaps in ASEAN community. We just finished the ASEAN summit just not long ago. And we also need to get some feedback how uh, important it was. Uh, all those issues were raised in the ASEAN People's Forum and other, other summits just to see how, whether this whole community really do care about these human rights issues. Well, moving on to the next news about Indonesia. Well, uh, Singapore's Deputy Prime Minister T. Chi Hin and of course the Indonesia's uh, President Joko Widodo. Yesterday, uh, it was just yesterday they gathered together to uh, talk about this haze as well as a ter terrorism. When it comes to, uh, of course, a haze, it is a, a Southeast Asian's problem and also when it comes to terrorism, it is now have become a global issue there. And they wanted to work together to deal with this decades old haze crisis as well as the, this terrorism issue. Uh, the recent uh, the event in Paris and many other uh, events in the uh, Middle East as well as uh, potential sort of uh, countermarks in the Southeast Asia that has uh, raised a lot of uh, worrisome as well as uh, concerns over uh, when it comes to terrorism and that they are uh, citizens are questioning what have the whole uh, ASEAN as a community have done so far. And Mr. Teo had called uh, Mr. Joko Wi at the presidential palace to discuss uh, further on these matters. So uh, how these two countries can strengthen the relationship between their uh, militaries and also enhance the cooperation in the counterterrorism at, uh, at this point. So on the matter of the flight information region, which is called FIR issue, the leaders agreed that the priority should be safety, efficiency, and a smooth operation for the airspace. And uh, Deputy Prime Minister, who is also coordinating Minister for National Security, uh, he had said that after a meeting with the Indonesia Coordinating Minister for Political, Legal, and Security Affairs, Luhut uh, a pa a Pajaitan, that the issue was a technical one based on the aviation safety, not sovereignty, of course. Singapore, however, they had been uh, in a control of flight over some areas since 1946, and this uh, was approved by the International Civil Aviation Organ Organization, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, according to them. So, this all prepar preparations are ongoing, but they cannot be done in a month or a year. It will take a longer time to make sure that to ensure that this cooperation really functions properly. So, these both ministers agree the preventive measures are key to avoid this repeat of this year's crisis. And also, uh, this is very important that uh, there are have been. Uh, uh, there was a bilateral relationship and also it is very important to strengthen, strengthening this relationship and not only that but uh, look uh, really deeply into the aviation and also when it comes to haze crisis. So the last news before we add the political side of Southeast Asia which is about a question when whether 
can ASEAN ever solve the South China Sea dispute through the multilateral dialogue? Uh, of course, uh, this is a huge question when it comes to uh, Southeast Asia. And of course, we had the 27th Association of Southeast Asian Nations Summit in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, and of course, South China Sea is one of the problems with uh, dialogue partners, delegates from China, South Korea, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and the United States, and of course, Russia. Uh, they addressed the certain problems. And uh, when it comes to South China Sea, China has been eyeing, uh, laying down their claims and also eyes to the South China Sea by building their uh, 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 buildings there, basically, and also have been marking their territories. But here, the policymakers should continue to voice this confidence in ASEAN the inconclusive dialogue mechanism. Even in the wake of the weakest and most recent fa failure, seeing them as central to resolving disputes in the South China Seas. Of course, uh, according to Australian Foreign Minister Julie Bishop, uh, and that was just last day, he called for the uh, peaceful resolution of maritime dispute in accordance with the uh, ASEAN principles. Despite this all, uh, all this uh, that was given to ASEAN, the role seems increasingly marginal. Uh, China still uh, claims the sea as a China's lake, and of course uh, there are many other counter op op opinions according to this. And uh, evaluating the uh, ASEAN's role in the, this this managing problem with the South China, Ch South China Sea uh, reveals that uh, it is far from addressing the evolving conflict of international rights of this free passage on the high seas. And its weak uh, multilateral approach only further this sit on already troubled waters. So there really needs to be a really firm and conclusive, uh, conclusive uh, sort of a solution between China and ASEAN nation. And of course, we can talk about what is the biggest threat facing this world today when it comes to South China Sea, and many other questions can be raised. But however, the more important is we really need to have an ASEAN voice as whole community to be able to come up with a solution as as to resolve this whole negotiation between the China and ASEAN as a role, and even to touch the basis of the historical facts and also the accordance with the international law as well. So that's it for our political side of Southeast Asia. We'll come back after this short break. So stay tuned. <laughs> ASEAN Dailies, first and the foremost news from Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Drian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. You are, the, you are with Grace and ASEAN Dailies, where we deliver news from Southeast Asia. Now, let's focus on economic news. Well, ASEAN community is here. And of course, it's always been here. And leaders must come with the terms uh, with their domestic constituency on issues and measures, of course. Well, ASEAN community, when it comes to on paper, of course, it's there, it's written there. Just like uh, their um, predecessors who signed the Bangkok Declaration in 1967, and when you think about the ASEAN Charter in 2008, ASEAN leaders were eager to have their signatures imprinted on the two historic documents, which was the Kuala Lumpur Declaration on establish, Establishment of ASEAN Community 2015, and also the other one was Kuala Lumpur Declaration on ASEAN 2025, forging ahead together. So, will it be for the better of a worse? For sure, uh, this declared uh, com commitment will guide the future of this ASEAN uh, community uh, in the next 10 years. Well, this sort of uh, do sense the urgency Laos, which is the next ASEAN chair, uh, the country was quick to pick up the official theme of the turning vision into reality for dynamic ASEAN community. 
and uh, for Laos, the priority lies in the bridging the development gap between all the new members, promotion of the small and medium enterprises, and sustainable tourism. So these are the doable objectives for the next chair. But after all, uh, Laos is expected to graduate from least developed countries in the in the list uh, in 2020 because when you think about uh, CL CLMB countries, Laos is one of them uh, being uh, being the least developed countries. And of course, uh, when it comes to this, President Barack Obama told Lao Prime Minister Tong Sing uh, Tamavak Wong that he would attend this 2019th summit in uh, Vietnam from September 6 to 9 next year before he ends his second term. So he also wants to plan his visit to impact, uh, to give the impact positively on the country. But this time around, when it comes to ASEAN summit, it was sort of overwhelmed by terrorist attacks in Egypt, France, and Mali. So uh, the incident, the countries uh, attending the related summits were the similar mind on this struggle against extremism. And of course, when it comes to Najib, uh, PM Najib, who has quite skillful in the chairing ASEAN uh, so far, granted that the domestic pressure resulting from alleged uh, corruption charges, he has also been able to highlight the field of ASEAN achievement and solidarity on all the front, especially issues related to the major powers. So when it comes to other issues, of course, like I mentioned before, it was regarding the South China Sea. And oh, when it comes to um, South, South, China, South China Sea, of course, it is very well understood that the remaining obstacles they have to overcome uh, completely uh, the integ to integrate the ASEAN community into uh, inclusive community with the competitiveness and leverage in the global setting. However, they have not yet really come to terms with their domestic constituencies on specific issues yet. So basically, it is uh, again safe to say ASEAN community is still work in pro progress with a lot of hiccups for investors are eager to establish this foothold and they take advantage of the world's seventh largest economy and it is very true and with the recent event uh, from the Myanmar all the way from Myanmar having this successful election and a peaceful political transition has been the sort of hallmark of 28 ASEAN meeting and of course during his visit in Kuala Lumpur Obama also repeatedly praised the Myanmar's political and economic reforms and the foreign minister of uh, Wuna Maung Leon responded that the president who could visit the country at any time. So this gathering of ASEAN business leaders, Obama promoted the virtue of the TPP, and also it is just a more than just a trade pack, as it is also long-term investment in security and universal human rights. Much to the the char uh, charging of these those who not did not uh, come from TPP member countries. So when it comes to strengthening this ASEAN centrality in the premier region-wide security platform, the East Asia Summit is also the imperative to maintain the role of ASEAN in the regional and global politics. So we'll be talking and uh, discussing more on the ASEAN as uh, uh, the chair, Malaysia as the chair of ASEAN this year, and what have we achieved so far? What can we expect the next year? Uh, will we continue in our in our discussion? A discussion session at the Durian Hate. Stay tuned with us. So before we end our economic news, let's go to Singapore. Apparently, Singapore will outpace Hong Kong in growth in the rank of millionaires over the next five years, and with about uh, 1 in 30 people qualifying as high net worth by 2020, and is swelled by the Indians and Chinese keen to avoid the social unrest. So millionaires on the high net worth uh, individuals will increase 18.3% in Singapore, and that's over the period compared to the 15.6% in Hong Kong. Although Hong Kong has well much higher uh, millionaire population than Singapore, uh, about 1,090. Uh, 
193,000 against 154,000. Recent events such as Umbrella Revolution may have turned these um, uh, migratory H and W eyes away from the city. And also the event year ago, uh, the disease the event year ago when the students and warrior police cl clashed for the control of Hong Kong street in challenge to Chinese rule. And I'm also looking at the graphs. Uh, of course, this is a uh, by Bloomberg. And this is a uh, Singapore's wealthy population to grow about 8% by 2019. So relatively Singapore, uh, st of the uh, stability, it is uh, underscored by the high net worth of individuals having the lowest average wealth in Asia. Uh, and also that reflects the world lower in inequality, where Indonesia has the highest average wealth uh, and Germany's wealthy, for example, have an average wealth of $3.2 million. And Singapore and Hong Kong are vying to become uh, the preeminent financial hub in the Asia Pacific. And of course, in Hong Kong, Chinese uh, officials have called for voting out uh, for these pro democracy lawmakers and reaffirmed that the Communist Party authorities of the city. So when it comes to Singapore and Hong Kong, they are sort of competing each other. And uh, but when it comes to uh, these millionaires, uh, this, there is a large influx of Indian and Chinese millionaires into this country. So that's it. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll have a so short session on the social culture part of Southeast Asia. So stay tuned. <laughs> ASEAN Dailies, first and foremost news from Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Drian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing your with grace at ASEAN Dailies, where we deliver news from Southeast Asia. Now we are focusing on social culture part of ASEAN. Well, this is very good news, which is coming all the way from Cambodia, where Cambodia's capital, Phnom Penh, is targeting to uh, this plastic bag pollution. So they want to try to cut the plastic bag use in the capital and uh, of course joining other Southeast Asian cities like Manila, Ho Chi Minh City and Penang as well. So UNESCO and the Ministries of Environment and Tourism will launch this program coming Friday uh, aimed at reducing the use of plastic bags and raising awareness about the dangers of littering uh, which will uh, will take place very slowly and this project uh, will initially uh, target the Riverside District, an area that's close to Royal Palace, and also some of the popular uh, places with both international tourists and local residents. So these are the targeted areas that they'll be uh, uh, working on uh, after launching uh, to cut down this plastic bag usage. And uh, of course, this is very important because it is a very uh, uh, it is very uh, important to bring the awareness from the public to when it comes to plastic bag because it's not biodegradable uh, when it, when you just uh, trash out and throw it away and of course it will hurt the environment even though you can just throw one plastic bag but then imagine the whole population of ASEAN it actually can cause the major problem to environment. So we'll update more uh, up, uh, news from the, this particular uh, launching of the plastic bag later on. And then moving on to the next news, which is um, about the the New Year, Hmong New Year New Year celebration to come uh, will be begin very very soon. So. Uh, this year's festivities will take place uh, from about 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., uh, which will begin tomorrow. So ever since the, the Hmong people first settled in the Benning area in the early 1980s, they have also shared their culture with the community through this New Year celebration. So there will be daytime activities and nighttime activities, of course, and the celebration ends with the New Year party about 6 p.m to midnight on Saturday on uh, at the Benning Community Center. So uh, this celebration is a big holiday for them and 
it, it helps to keep、uh, their traditions and culture alive, and it also teaches their new generation to maintain,、uh, also to know who they are, and.、Uh, This history of the Hmong community in Beijing provided、uh, by this explains that the Hmong people have been without the country for thousands of years and forcefully driven from their homeland.、Uh, it was first in China and more recently in Laos. Uh, so uh, this is of course the country between Vietnam and Thailand. And Laos, as I mentioned before,、uh, it will be a chair of ASEAN next year. So a lot of expectations. Uh, will is lie there as as well, and uh, this uh, Hmong name、uh, can be translated into people or even a free people. So this non-profit、uh, festivals it does not have any formal membership, and、uh, but it it wants to include all the people to celebrate who live in Beijing and the surrounding cities. So that's it、uh, from us of Durian ASEAN. Look for us at our social social media channels at Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and. Twitter and visit us our at our website and also don't forget to download our app Durian ASEAN to listen to our podcast. We'll continue、uh, our Durian heat after this short break, so stay tuned with us. <laughs>